What could be the coolest thing that I could do with my life? That question has continuously disrupted my life in the best possible way to help me pivot towards the life that I've truly always wanted. You can't unconsciously achieve your goals. You have to actively design your life with your goals in mind in order to get to where you wanna go in life. According to the National Science Foundation, an average person has about 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. Of those, 80% are negative and 95% are repetitive thoughts. So not only are a majority of my thoughts negative, but they aren't unique and I'm repeating this negative story in my head that I'm telling myself. If you wanna change your life as it currently stands, the key is flipping the script on this negative bias in your mind. It does take active work and many different methodologies to flip the narrative we tell ourselves. From meditation to letting go of dwelling on the past and worrying about the future, prayer, reflection, affirmations, journaling, reading, and so much more. These are elements that I've incorporated into seeing my life change drastically over the last few years. From being a software engineer for seven years, years and being at the top of my industry as a vice president of engineering to being a personal trainer and ultimately becoming a content creator and matching my $150,000 salary that I was making as a software engineer. Life went from being full of depression and anxiety and stress and overthinking and convinced of the story I was telling myself that my life had little worth to truly disrupting my path and crafting a life that I can honestly say that I love and it's only getting better from here. <laughs> For the last two years, I've hosted a vision night with some girlfriends at the start of the new year to cast vision over what the next year is going to look like and support and empower and pray with each other over the things that we're believing for for the next year. Coming together and sharing in our goals, dreams, and visions really had power, especially at the end of a new year, reflecting on not only my personal goals and visions, but seeing what has come to pass in my friend's life as well it was incredibly motivating motivating for me. One of the methods that we used to help flip the script on the negative narrative in our mind was the 12 areas of balance from John and Missy Butcher's life book. These are all encompassing areas in our life where we can consciously design and optimize our best life. And lucky for you, I am now going to take you through this workshop of designing your life through the 12 areas of balance. To start, grab a journal or a notebook, something that you can look back on regularly and check in on. Then I'm going to take you through the 12 areas areas of balance, which you're then going to rate from one to 10. I'm going to give you the category, give you a short description, and then your first impression rating is what you should go with. You shouldn't contemplate on it too much. Number one, your love relationship. How happy are you? Whether you're single and loving it or in a relationship or desiring one, how would you rate your love life from one to 10? Number two, your friendships. How strong is your support network? Do you have at least five friends who have your back and who you love to be around? Number three, your adventures. How much time do you get to travel to new places that open you up to new experiences that excite you? Number four, your environment. The quality of your home, work, and space that you live in, your car, and the spaces where you spend time, even when you're traveling. Number five, your health and fitness. Given your age and physical conditions, how would you rate your health and fitness? Number six, your intellectual life. Are you a lifelong learner? How many books do you read a year? How many seminars or courses do you take yearly? Number seven, your current skills. How fast are you improving the skills you have to make you unique and help you build a successful career? Are you growing towards mastery or are you stagnating? Number eight, your spiritual life. How much time do you devote to spiritual, meditative, or contemplative practices that keep you feeling connected, balanced, and peaceful? Mm -hmm. 
Number nine, your career. Are you growing, climbing the ladder and excelling? Or do you feel like you're stuck in a rut? If you have a business, is it thriving or stagnating? Number 10, your creative life. Do you engage in activities that help you channel your creativity? Do you paint, write, or play a musical instrument or other creative activities? Or are you more of a consumer than a creator? Number 11, your family life. Do you love coming home after a long, hard day? If you live alone, how's your relationship with your parents, siblings, or chosen family? And number 12, your community. Are you contributing and playing a definite role in your community? Do you do volunteer work? Do you contribute to social causes? Now that you have your full list, I want you to take stock of all the ratings and note your top three highest rated and your bottom three lowest rated. For your top three, you've done such an amazing job in these areas and it's something to celebrate. It's so important to look at not only where your life has opportunity for growth, but also where you have opportunity to celebrate. And whether it's a pat on the back, a whole party to celebrate or something in between, celebrating yourself is an important aspect of changing those negative thought patterns. And for those bottom three, you're gonna use those as the focus for your next quarter. For the next three months, those can give you guidance on how you can start elevating your life and designing a better life for yourself by bringing up the areas that have opportunities for growth. As you continue to do this over time, you'll see that these numbers grow, but also some numbers fall. And it's part of life being seasonal where some areas will have really peak seasons and then will fall and come back up again. But as you flip the narrative and have a more positive outlook on life, you can find contentment and peace in any season. For those bottom three, you want to ask the question, what would my ideal scene look like in this area? For your love relationship, if the goal is that in a year I want to to be in a happy, safe, loving relationship. A habit attached to that might be, I am going to go to three events a month that have to do with my passions to meet more like-minded people. Or for your intellectual life, if the goal is, I want to be more intellectually stimulated, a habit might be, I'm gonna read one book a month. By doing this, you can start to take incremental changes towards designing your ideal life. Coming back to that question of what would be the coolest thing that I can do with my life? Give yourself time to dream big. What would your ideal life look like? You can use these 12 areas of balance as a guidepost for how those different areas in your life would look like in one year and in three years in the most ideal state. I hope this video could help you, number one, start to flip the script on that negative bias in your mind, and number two, begin the steps to designing your ideal life. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up so more people can find my channel. I would love to celebrate with you, so let me know in the comments below what was one of your top three areas of balance. I really appreciate you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.